Hey guys, um, welcome back again. Kind of like in this second week, I don't know exactly when this lecture is going to fall. Um, today is Thursday, the 26th for me. That's when I'm recording this. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, this will actually be your Monday morning lecture. Um, so uh, just a couple things that I, I wanted to chat about with you guys. Um, aside from the material itself, uh, at this point, you guys have probably already taken your Great War. 1920s exam so hopefully that went well for you guys um, just a kind of an administrative note that I want to talk about you guys know I'm always harping on like college preparedness and stuff and how important it is um, I know that this has been difficult on some of you guys and maybe like a little bit weird um, but understand that what you guys are doing now uh, is more than just learning history or math or science you guys are actually learning a very different lesson than you probably realize, but this right here is getting you guys ready for college. Um, a lot of classes that you'll end up taking, for me, I actually only took one online class when I was in college, but even still, the rest of the classes that I did take were very heavy online work after I left the classroom. So, um, And again, I took one college class that was just completely online, so I had to log in every day and watch lectures and then do discussion boards and turn in assignments. And so it was a lot and it was different because um, all that work ended up being on me. So what is what is going on right now with this whole being out of school thing? Um, it's actually teaching you guys, I think, a really valuable lesson. And I hope some of you guys are seeing it. I can tell that there are some of you guys that are really taking it very, very serious. Um, you guys are doing great, uh, like messaging me, asking me questions. Some of you guys participating in the discussion board. A lot of you guys are... Not, and I'm going to assume it's because you know everything, not because you're just ignoring the assignment, which is fine, you know. Um, but again, remember, all this learning is going to come back on you guys. So when it comes to college, uh, just understand that, like, high school, you know, you show up at 7 in the morning and you work till 2 and then it's kind of done for the day. Well, in college, like, your assignments are going to be on you and whatever time you choose to do that. Um, due dates are due dates and they're firm um, for college and so, like, Stick with some of us high school teachers because some of us are still learning to do this just like you guys are learning to do this. Um, but this is a good thing because it is it's putting pressure on you guys, a little bit of stress that you're probably not used to. Um, but it's preparing you guys to do college. Um, so again, while it seems like it's pretty uh, monotonous and there's a lot of stuff going on, um, understand that you're learning a lot of lessons for the future. So I'm trying to keep it really light on you guys uh, because I know that there are some teachers that are just like trying to monopolize your time. I'm not one of those. Um, I just want you guys to learn the material and then we'll move forward. So my class hasn't changed too much other than the fact that I don't get to see you guys and hang out and eat it, uh, with you guys every day like I used to. So um, just know I miss you guys and I hope you are doing well. Uh, additionally, if you guys need anything, um, and it's happened with a, uh, with a couple of my students already, if you guys need anything and just like can't get your point across an email or are confused, please reach out to me. Like I can do conferences with you guys face to face. I've done that with a couple of students. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a shout out to my uh, student aide who's actually the first person that I did that with. And we, uh, we had to talk. Uh, it was really late one night, but he was having trouble with an assignment because he's in one of my classes as a, in addition to my uh, being my aide. So he stayed up with me and we talked about it and, you know, just kind of caught up. And so if you guys, yeah, just need to chat about an assignment or anything or um, having difficulties um, with anything like making a schedule, figuring out how to kind of do all the stuff, just let me know and we'll, um, yeah, we'll set up a time. I'll do pretty much what I'm doing right now, but I will talk to you guys via face-to-face -face interaction. It'll be, uh, I think, Google Meet is what I've been using. So uh, it's pretty easy. It takes just a couple seconds to get on and then we can go from there. So again, if you need anything, feel free to inbox me. Uh, we'll set up a time. We'll chat about it. So, all right. Um, we left off talking about, uh, let me see. I got to pull my slides up. Sorry guys. Um, FDR. Uh, so we talked a little bit about the introduction to his presidency. Um, you guys should be filling out that T chart um, about Hoover and FDR and kind of like the differences between them. One of the things, again, that is important to notate is the approach taken to the economy 
by a Republican versus a Democrat, FDR being the Democrat. And we are going to look a lot more in depth at FDR's presidency than we are Hoover. And for a couple reasons, but Hoover is out early in the Depression, um, and FDR ends up staying for the rest of the Depression and actually part of World War II. Um, so we'll talk about his presidency during the war as well. So he's going to be kind of like your forefront leader when we get to World War II, which should be hopefully next week. Uh, we don't have a ton more to go. So um, anyway, uh, today we are going to go through slides. We left off at 43, so we just kind of ran through some of those things, the bank holiday, FIRA, CWA, AAA, NRA, CCC, and TBA. Um, if you are filling out that T-chart, there is that, that last question talks about programs. So for Hoover, you should have put like, I think it's the RFC and you could talk about localism and volunteerism and all that stuff. Um, uh, public works programs, all those different things for FDR. Um, there's actually another chart that you're going to fill out on canvas and let me roll over to it. Um, so you guys can see the chart is called, it's the, uh, New Deal Graphic Organizer. Okay, so in your T-chart, if you're filling that out, go like on that last question that I asked about the programs, just put C New Deal Graphic Organizer or C, C chart, whatever you want to put. Um, so yeah, we're going to break this down into a couple of different uh, sections and kind of the, uh, the different aspects of the New Deal. So today we're going to talk about um, just the relief aspect of the New Deal. Um, there are three parts. Um, so just like in the causes of the Depression, there is the Triple C. This is going to be the Triple R, our relief, recovery, and reform. So uh, I think I've mentioned in my last lecture about kind of the way to break this down. When you think about relief, I always give the example of a hurricane, right? Um, so you think back to some of the hurricanes we've had, they're pretty big. Uh, what does relief look like for a hurricane. Okay. So at the top of that graphic organizer, it says relief and it's got a colon for you guys to kind of define it. Relief is like your emergency aid, right? It's the, uh, it's the, the things that rush in like immediately after a hurricane to get people back on their feet to kind of get society kind of back on track instead of that mass devastation that comes after a hurricane. They want to kind of make sure people are able to survive. So that's what your relief is going to be. Um, there's a few uh, programs for relief that we're going to talk about. Um, today we're going to talk about the Bank Holiday, uh, FIRA, and the CWA. Um, so today's actually pretty short as far as lectures go, um, but there is a follow-up assignment on this, and we'll talk about that uh, at the end. So relief, if you're filling out the chart, which you should be, um, Relief is just emergency action, um, ways to to kind of get people back on their feet and get people surviving. So uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is the bank holiday. So by the way, we're going from slides 44 today to 49 is all. Um, we'll do relief and then we'll do recovery and reform, I think, tomorrow. I'll have to look exactly at my notes and where we're going to go. Um, so uh, go to slide 45. Um, it says the bank holiday. So these are some numbers to kind of get you guys understanding what, uh, what the bank system looks like in the United States during the great depression. Right now, again, I've been making a lot of comparisons with the economy during this time and the great depression. So like now in the great depression, right. To make you feel better because I know everything's kind of like lined up or it seems like it has in some ways. One of the things that President Trump has refused to do is close the banks. He calls them essential workers. <clears throat> and the reason for that is is because when you close banks, people panic, right? The one thing that people don't want to mess with is their money. So um, if you look at this, kind of those sub points, right? You've got 1929, 1930, 31, 32, and 33. So bank failures in the United States. So in 1929, there's 659 banks failed. That's the year of the crash, all right? 30, there's 1,352. 31, there are 2,294, 32, there's 1,452, and then in 1933, at the peak of the Depression, is 4,000 banks. Now, what I want you guys to understand about these numbers, that's not a total. 1929, 659 banks failed. 
1930, another 1,352 banks, and then 31, another 2,294 banks. So every year it's compiling. That's not the total number of banks, right? Um, so FDR's first deal when he gets into office, right, um, is this thing called a bank holiday. So go to your next slide. Um, and a bank holiday will – you guys are actually going to listen to or – uh, read his address to the nation. Um, so basically FDR goes on the radio, right? So this is, again, we talked about the 1920s and so, and how that, uh, that technology kind of changes up the way that America does things. Um, this is a great example. Uh, if you want to make a comparison, this is the Twitter for president Roosevelt, just like Twitter to president Trump, right? So, the radio is is Roosevelt's way to talk directly to the population. So, um, with that, he goes on and he addresses the nation directly. <clears throat> the president is talking directly to the people. It is not via um, newspaper or anything like that. It is a way that people can hear exactly what the president is saying. It's not a quote. It is just him talking to the people. So he calls them fireside chats. Um, and the reason for that is, you know, we talked about radio being a source of entertainment, right? A lot of people kind of just sat there and listened to um, President Roosevelt talk on the radio, or excuse me, they would sit by the, the fire and they would listen to the radio at night. Well, this, he calls it a fireside chat because people are just sitting there, again, by the fire, listening to the president talk to him. So, um, the purpose of the fireside chat is that he wants to close all banks for a few days um, and then reopen them. Uh, so he goes on there and tells them, hey, look, we're going to close them down and you know we're going to let the banks kind of take a break. We're going to reset and then we'll open the banks and everything will be fine. So what he's doing is he's reassuring the nation that their money's safe and everything's going to be okay. One of the things, and when you guys read this for this assignment, as you will see, is that President Roosevelt actually just breaks down how banking works. Um, if you don't know, when you take your money to a bank, again, and I think I've, I've talked about this in an early lecture, the bank actually doesn't hold your money, right? It loans it out. So President Roosevelt explains that process to them. Um, and so with his bank holiday, he closes the banks and mm -hmm. then like two or three days later, he opens them. And in reality, President Roosevelt actually doesn't do anything. There's nothing that happens in those few days. It's just like they're taking a couple days off, right? Um, but when the banks do reopen, the deposits actually outnumber the withdrawals. So the question is, what does FDR actually do? Um, and I'm not going to answer that in this lecture. Uh, we'll probably post that as a discussion, and I want you guys to understand what happens, right? There's something that's very important that happened um, that FDR actually does. And it's not a physical thing, but there's something that FDR does for the people. And when you read uh, the source after this, uh, I want you to keep that in mind. What is FDR actually doing when he's talking to the people, he's explaining how banks working, he closes the banks and then reopens them and everything's just fine magically, right? There's nothing that happens. There's no programs that he does. He doesn't give the banks a ton of money. All right, just to be clear, it's, it's exactly that. He closes the banks, gives them a few days off. Nothing magic happens. He doesn't reset the economy or anything like that. And then he just reopens them. Why? My question to you is, why is it such a success? What does FDR actually do that makes people deposit more money than they withdraw when the banks reopen? All right, so if you're looking at that chart, you would say that the bank holiday is a mass success, right? Um, so... Keep that question in the back of your mind, and we'll we'll address it as as an assignment or something. Um, all right, go to the next um, slide, slide forty seven. Uh, talks about fear. Okay, so this is also a question on your exam that will be coming up uh, for the Great Depression and World War II. FIRA is the Federal Emergency Relief Administration. Okay, so um, FIRA offers money to people in a desperate situation, right? Um, so essentially the way this works is if you are broke, right, you have zero money coming in, you go to FIRA, FIRA office, you apply, and they give you a check, and that's it. There's no there's no gimmick. It's not 
something you have to pay back. It is an emergency relief deal, all right? It just gives people free money. Now, it's not a million dollars, right? But it is enough to get food um, if your family's starving. Uh, kind of just do those things, right? Um, just your bare necessities. So here's the thing. People don't want to take part in this. Uh, and it actually, if you're filling out the chart, you would mark fear as a failure. Now, <laughs> this is going to sound funny to a lot of you guys because you're thinking, well, oh, free money, that sounds amazing, right? Um, we've talked a little bit about that American mindset. Um, males being the breadwinners. Uh, you know, the household is set up a certain way, and there's a reason that fear fails, okay? So to draw that conclusion, I want you guys to go to the next one, which is the CWA, the Civilian Works Administration. CWA is an 18 to 20 hour work week, all right? Not a day, it is a week. You go 18 to 20 hours, and you work, um, and you earn a little bit of money to get by, okay? So there's not really much difference in this in FIRA other than the fact that it's a small job. Now, the type of work you're doing is not really that big of a deal. Um, you're doing, you're sweeping the street or you're shoveling a ditch, uh, picking up trash, just small things. And again, if you have a job and you need extra money, you go to the CWA, you work for two hours after you get off work, and then you go home, you get a little bit of money, so on and so forth, right? The checks are very small. And again, it is not meant to be a full-time job. It is meant to get people kind of just get them by. Um, so if you look at the, the overall kind of deal with, uh, the CWA, the CWA, like it's just a time filler. There's no real progress being done. It's not like they're building something or improving society. They're literally, it's kind of a progressive idea in a way, you know, we've talked about the progressives, um, it's city beautification. It's, you know, just small jobs to fill up time, but nothing of mass importance, right? If you pick up trash on the side of the road, two days later, there's going to be more trash, right? Um, but they're still working for it. So CWA is going to be a mass success. I ask you why. Well, think about the two, um, FIRA and the CWA and compare them in your mind as far as relief goes. Um, it's, it's crazy because, again, you look at the shift in American mindset and the type of people during the Depression and what they're, uh, they're going through. It's a very desperate situation. And we'll talk about desperation when we talk about demagogues and some of the people that um, – leaders, if you will, that people start following and listening to. Um, but, again, it's, it's a desperate situation. But when people start offering free money – the country refuses. Some people in the country refuse to take it, and that's important. Um, so, uh, again, you ask yourself why. Why would people refuse to take free money um, versus the CWA where they're going out and doing jobs that don't even matter and essentially getting the same payoff? Well, the question is, or not the question, but the answer is really it's because of their pride, right? If you look at the fear of slide, the last or yeah, the fear of slide, the last point says it's charity and it fails miserably. People don't want to be considered as charity cases, right? They don't want people to think of them as not being able to earn their keep or not being able to provide for themselves or their families. Males are the breadwinners. There is a pride aspect to fear and the CWA that that makes one a success and one a failure. So there's a a question on your study guide about why does one fail and one one is a success and the the reason is because people are still very prideful they don't want a handout they want to earn their money um, so when you think about that uh, just kind of remember that you know there is something to be said for working for your money versus people just giving it to you because you can't provide um, when I was in college at Lee, I had to take this class called Benevolence, right? It's about um, servitude and kind of like ways that you help people and whatnot. And so in Benevolence class, there was a story, a guy that came and spoke to us about helping people and the things that he was doing. And he was talking about like there was a family that couldn't like afford Christmas. And so uh, their 
their ch- uh, church kind of like went and donated Christmas to a family and, you know, they sat around while they opened their gifts and all this stuff. And they talked about the dad kind of got up and left the room and he sat in the kitchen and he was crying. And the reason for that was because he felt like a failure because he couldn't provide for his family. So instead, the next year, instead of doing that, they actually set up a community shop where people were donating toys, right? So it was they were getting toys for free and those people would go to the community shop and they would say, like, they would offer to the same toys that you could get on the shelf for, like, a very low price. And, you know, they were like, oh, you know, I really want that, but I can't afford it. And so they would ask, hey, how, like, how much do you think it's worth um, this much? And they would say, well, why don't you come in and work the shop for two hours and, like, sweep or sell stuff or be a cashier or whatever. And then you can take that toy home. And so it ended up their shop for that, that community ended up being a mass success. And the reason is because people felt like they earned the, the stuff. They they weren't just getting a handout. It wasn't shameful, right? They still have that pride. Um, so that's an important thing to note. So if you're comparing FIRA and the CWA, one of the biggest things that you can understand is that people wanted to work for their stuff. They wanted to have that ability to earn their keep. Um, so now, bounce back to your... Uh, the bank holiday, um, kind of the slide 46, it's the one that kind of outlines everything. And what I want you guys to do for homework, this will be due tomorrow. Um, if you are looking at Canvas, there is a, I'm trying to find it because I haven't posted it yet. Ah, it says Fireside Chat Source, right? The source is published right now, the questions are not. What you need to do is you need to go read and or listen to the Fireside Chat that Roosevelt where he addresses the nation and then answer there are four questions um there's four questions about the fireside chat and I want you guys to kind of answer those and we'll talk about it uh in the next lecture a little bit we'll kind of go back and talk more about it and and um see what you guys have for the assignment so make sure you guys watch this lecture uh, which if you're watching this, you've already done that. So anyway, uh, and go follow up with the fireside chat question. Um, fireside chat questions, sorry, multiple questions. Uh, that's going to be your homework, and that's all I have for you guys. Uh, we'll talk more about it in the next lecture, and then we will go on to recovery. We will talk about recovery, and I'll actually see if I can do recovery and reform or if it's going to be too long and need to bust it down for a couple of days. Uh, but we are getting closer to the end of the depression on uh, this is going a lot faster because i don't have that time to interact with you guys so get those done uh that's your homework also um don't forget if you need to talk to me just send me an email or message me on canvas we'll set up a time i will send you a link we will conference i will talk to you face to face you can see me i can see you all that great stuff we'll get you guys through your assignments if you have any questions just let me know um so i'm here for you guys uh great job keep doing what you're doing if you have any issues let me know uh, check your canvas every day. Make sure you're looking for those announcements. Remember, I'm taking a grade every time you guys log in. Uh, it's counting as a brain wrangler grade for you guys. So uh, keep it up. Best of luck. Uh, don't cough or sneeze in public. <laughs>